How's it going guys? Eric here from TechSode TV and in today's TechSode we're going to be doing a speed test between the Galaxy S6, Galaxy Note 4, and Galaxy S3. That's right, the Galaxy S3. A lot of people actually still have this phone and are due for an upgrade, so I figured I'd include it in this video so we could see how far technology has come in the past three years. All of these devices have been freshly factory reset and the only apps installed are the ones required for these tests. We're going to start with a pretty boring boot test, but then quickly move on to app launching, multitasking, a camera speed test, then we're going to wrap it up with some benchmarks. Alright, let's get started. We'll start with the usual shutdown and boot tests. To be honest, I'm not quite sure how useful this test is because how often does anyone need to shut their phone off quickly or restart it in general? Either way, I know a lot of people like to see everything tested, so here it is. As you can see, the S6 shut off first, followed surprisingly by the S3, then lastly the Note 4 finishes shutting off. Now time for the boot test. The Galaxy Note 4 goes from last to first with the S6 close behind and the S3 drops to last place. Here we go with the system app test. Before starting this test, I do clear all apps to make sure none of the phones have an advantage. The S6 takes the lead right out of the gate, but the Note 4 isn't falling too far behind. The run to the litter is performing respectably, but I think it's safe to say the S3 is out of the running. If you pay close attention, you can see that the S6 and the Note 4 open apps just about as quickly as each other, but the S6 is pulling ahead each time it returns to the home screen. It returns so quick that I almost can't get my finger to the next app fast enough after hitting the home button. Meanwhile, after hitting the home button on the Note 4, I'm left waiting to hit the next app. The Galaxy S6 is just finishing up now, and I miss the stop button at first and end up getting a time of about 36 seconds. I went back through the video frame by frame and the actual time was 35.25 seconds. The Galaxy Note 4 comes in at a respectable 42.47 seconds. I stopped the Galaxy S3 stopwatch about a half second too early, so we'll call it 50 seconds instead of 49.24. A quick side note. You can make the Note 4 almost exactly as fast as the S6 by disabling the double tap to get to S voice option. After doing that, I could consistently finish the test in 36 seconds with the Note 4. You should also know that disabling the double tap to get to the camera feature on the S6 does not give you any improvement. I tried it and couldn't beat 35 seconds even with multiple attempts. Time for the multitasking test. It seems that once the apps are loaded into RAM, all three phones perform comparably. This makes sense because RAM has always been extremely fast. It's tough to pick a winner between the S6 and the Note 4 because sometimes the Note 4 opens an app first and other times the S6 does. Both open apps faster than the S3, but that's to be expected. I'll leave this decision up to you, but I think it's safe to say that when it comes to daily use, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the S6 and the Note 4 in terms of multitasking unless the devices were side by side. That brings us to the games test. I put the phones on airplane mode and disabled Wi-Fi for this test because I wanted to make sure that none of the apps tried to access the internet while starting. I ran this test with Wi-Fi on multiple times and the results were vastly different every time because my internet speeds at home are super slow and vary greatly by the minute. Not every game tried to access the internet, but it was still enough to skew the results. With Wi-Fi and mobile data off, I was able to get much more consistent results which better represent the speed differences between these devices. Alright, first up is Crossy Road. It's a pretty simple game that isn't demanding on the processor or the GPU. It opens first on the Galaxy S6, followed one second later by the Galaxy Note 4, then the Galaxy S3 5 seconds after that. Next up is Piano Tiles, the lightest game of the bunch. The S6 barely finishes faster than the Note 4, with the S3 being 2 seconds behind the S6. After that, we have our first heavy game, Real Racing 3. While this is loading, I'll take a quick moment to tell you that I do clear any open apps before opening each game to make sure there is nothing to skew the results. Also, the reason I'm only testing two heavy games is because most people who play any games on smartphones typically play small games like Temple Run or Piano Tiles. Using mostly light to medium games for this test should give more meaningful results to most people. This game really puts some distance between all three devices. The Galaxy S6 comes in first, with the Galaxy Note 4 6 seconds behind. Then, in last place, we get Father Time, which trailed 17 seconds behind the S6. Next, we have Minion Rush. This is a medium weight game, falling somewhere between Crossy Road and Real Racing 3. The Galaxy S6 loads up the game first, with the Galaxy Note 4 trailing 3 seconds behind. The Galaxy S3 comes in last. 
eight seconds behind the Galaxy S6. Next up is one of my favorite games, Duet. This is another light game, and as such, loads super fast. The Galaxy S6 barely finishes first here, being just half a second ahead of the Note 4, and only one and a half seconds ahead of the S3. Here's another light game called Skyward. This one gives us a surprise result with the Galaxy S6 finishing first, followed by the Galaxy S3 a second behind, with the Note 4 coming in one third of a second behind the S3. Getting close to the end, we have our second big game, Asphalt 8. Here, the Galaxy S6 just straight up skips the loading screen. The Note 4 does stop at the loading screen and consequently comes in three seconds behind the S6, with the Galaxy S3 finishing up 9 seconds behind the S6. Last but not least, we have Temple Run. The S6 gets past the splash screen first and keeps the lead all the way to the start screen. The Note 4 comes in just a second and a half behind the S6, with the S3 finishing 4 seconds behind the S6. So, after these tests, it's clear that the Galaxy S6 is consistently faster than the other two phones when it comes to loading games. However, that speed difference isn't quite as noticeable for lighter games. Next up is the two-part camera speed test. The first test is to see how fast you can get to the camera when your screen is off. The Galaxy S6 will have the edge here because a double tap to the home button launches the camera immediately. The Note 4 and S3 require you to turn the screen on, then swipe the camera icon, so those will definitely be slower. Let's slow this down to a quarter of the speed so we can see things a little bit better. It's clear that the Galaxy S6 always comes in first. What's interesting is that the screen on the Note 4 comes on faster than the S3, but the S3 gets into the camera app faster than the Note 4. The second time around, the S3 still beats out the Note 4, but only by a tenth of a second. Then, in the last test, the Note 4 finally overtakes the S3 by almost a full second. The important thing to take away from this test is that the S6 is consistently faster, but all of these are fast enough that you likely won't miss a photo opportunity waiting for the camera app to open. The second part of this test is to see how fast you can get to the gallery to see the picture that you just took. As you can see, they all get to the gallery very fast, but the S6 is consistently a little faster than the Note 4, with the S3 remaining in last each time. To wrap these tests up, we have the benchmarks. All the phones have everything turned off except for Wi-Fi and the cell radio, and any open apps are cleared before running each benchmark. First up for the benchmarks is Quadrant. It doesn't take long to notice that both the Galaxy S6 and Galaxy Note 4 seem to be handling this benchmark with ease. Taking a look at the results, the Galaxy S6 finishes first with a score of 38,889, the Note 4 comes in second with a score of 29,638, and the Galaxy S3 comes in last with a depressing score of 7,114. Next up is the 3 Mark Ice Storm Unlimited test. I'm going to fast forward through this test because it takes a super long time. Alright, the tests are just finishing up. The Galaxy Note 4 finishes first with a solid score of 23,634, the Galaxy S6 comes in a close second with 21,612, and the Galaxy S3 scores an underwhelming 5,295. Time for Antutu. While the Antutu benchmark is running, I want to address why the Galaxy S6 is winning some tests, but not every test. It all comes down to some benchmarks being optimized for 32-bit processors, while others are more suited for 64-bit processors. I'd love to explain that in full detail in this video, but there's just not enough time, so I'll cover that in another video some other time. And speaking of 64-bit versus 32-bit, this first run of Antutu on the S6 is with the 32-bit version of the benchmark. Since the S6 has a 64-bit processor, there is a 64-bit benchmark option in Antutu. I'll show you the 64-bit version results after this. Alright, the Galaxy S6 finishes first with a score of 61,959, the Note 4 comes in second with 51,252, and shocker, the S3 comes in last with 19,004. Now let's switch to the 64-bit version on the S6 and run the test again. This time, the S6 score rises to 68,984. The Note 4 and S3 stayed around the same with 52,872 and 18,990 respectively. Last up for the benchmarks, we have Geekbench. The Galaxy S6 scores 1506 for the single core and 5127 for multi-core. The Galaxy Note 4 comes in second with a score of 1099 for single core and 3393 for multi-core. 
And the Galaxy S3 comes in last with a score of 508 for single core and 950 for multi core. The great thing about Geekbench is that they break everything down for you, so if you're interested in a certain type of compression or other specific operation, you can see the results for just that task. I'm going to keep scrolling through these so you can see all the results. Just pause the video whenever you see what you're looking for. Also, you probably can't see these numbers on a mobile device since the numbers are so small, so I recommend checking this out on a PC if you want to see the detailed results. So there you have it. The Galaxy S6 is consistently faster than the Note 4. But is that enough for you to want to trade your Note 4 in for an S6? Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what you guys thought about this video. Did I include everything you wanted to see? Did I miss something? Or did I include things that you just didn't want to see? Either way, let me know in the comments below so I can make my videos include more of what you do want to see and less of what you don't. Lastly, if you missed my Galaxy S6 unboxing and setup using Tap and Go, you can check that out by clicking the banner that's sliding out above me. Also, if you missed my Gear VR, Gear S, and Note 4 videos, you can check those out in the same place. And in the description. I'll, I'll have them there too. That's it for this episode. I'll see you guys in the next one.